The Spanish Riding School in Vienna, the highest perfection of classical horsemanship for 450 years. Generations of dukes, kings and emperors have marveled at and supported the noble Lipizzan stallions and the unique horsemanship. The nursery of these noble steeds is far away from the city, at the Federal Stud in Piba, Styria. Experienced breeders look after the next generation, right from the start. A birth is always exciting and wonderful, of course. Before the young horses are sent to Vienna to work, they spend the summer on the mountain pasture. That's when some of them really start showing their stallion side. They engage in playful fights and a few battles for dominance. For the first time, the riding school has broken a centuries-old tradition. A woman has been admitted as a student in this male-dominated field. It's a dream come true. The level of training I get here is completely unparalleled. The Spanish riding school is situated in the heart of Vienna. Emperor Maximilian II had the horses brought to his court from Andalusia in the mid-16th century. It's the origin of these noble steeds that gives the riding school its name. After every training session, the stallions are taken back to the stables from the indoor riding arena. The Stallburg is seen as one of the most beautiful buildings from the time of Emperor Maximilian. More than a hundred people work for the Spanish Riding School. In Vienna alone, there are 20 stable hands and grooms. Hanna Zeitelhofer has been training as a rider for two years now in the Spanish Riding School. This is a dream come true for the 22-year-old. But at least another eight years will pass before she'll have mastered her profession to perfection. It's a time of hard work in the stable and of clear hierarchy. The student isn't just subordinate to the other riders, she also has to answer to the strict senior stable manager. Right, Kitty's going out 15 minutes earlier today. He's going on the lunge. Take him over, will you? OK, I will. Since its foundation, the riding school had been open exclusively to men. Then Hanna Zeitelhofer came along. It was a bit strange at first, knowing I was the only woman. Maybe I got treated differently, but you get used to it very quickly because you're used to working with horses if you're a passionate rider. The horses give you a lot of trust. You can have so much fun. We all love horses. That's why the work is the same. The absolute boss in the Stallburg is senior stable manager Johannes Hamminger. He makes sure the young woman stands her ground. She's in pupillage at the moment and still has to prove that she can do it because it's not an easy path to take. It's not easy for the boys either. You need a certain strength when dealing with stallions because they might show you how strong they are. The young stallions can be a bit cheeky. The pupils' training ranges from riding and taking care of the horses to being shown how to use the stable broom properly. The Styrian Hills, 200 kilometers south of Vienna. Here at the Federal Stud in Piba, the Lipizzan horses are bred for the riding school. Of the 250 horses here, only the stallions are sent to Vienna, and only the best of them. Up to 40 foals are born at the stud every year. Before the mares are covered, a trial stallion is taken to the breeding shed where the mating will take place. Leopold Weiss is the senior stud manager. He's been at the stud for more than 40 years. The trial stallion sniffs the mares and the mare shows whether she's on heat. You can see she rejects him. That's why there's this plank, this wall here. It's to protect the stallion. 
because if the mare's not on heat, she'll kick quite hard. The wall is there to prevent the stallion from getting hurt. A mare will only let a stallion close to her if she's on heat. It's the job of the trial stallion to find that out, but he's only allowed to use his sensitive nose. He won't get to mate with the mare. For that, he'll have to make way for a stud. OK, off with you. Next lady, please. There's a good girl. Today, none of the selected ladies are receptive to the attentions of a stallion. We're back in Vienna. Work in the Stallburg starts at 6 in the morning. It's time for Hannah Zeitelhofer's daily riding lesson. The young woman has to settle her horse herself. Male colleagues don't help her. In fact, they boss her around. Make the noseband a bit looser. Mr. Buckinger introduced that. Good. The etiquette at the Spanish riding school has its roots in the time of the monarchy. The strict hierarchy of those days is still nurtured here. It's not easy for a modern young person to get used to such a tradition-conscious institution. I didn't know the people here well. I had a lot of respect for the senior riders. Of course, that's still the case, but I know them now and I can talk to them normally. It's not scary and it's not strict all the time. It all started 15 years ago. I've been riding since I was seven. When I was nine, I got my first horse. I went to gymkhanas and then I wanted to work with horses more and more. I thought training to be a rider would be ideal. You get the best training at the Spanish riding school. The problem was that they only took men. I thought I'd apply regardless. The worst that could happen would be a rejection. I was lucky enough to be invited to an interview and demonstrate my riding skills. The 15 riders have to answer to the senior rider Andreas Hausberger. Today, the expert is casting a strict eye on Hanna Zeitlofer. The whip indicates the direction. That's right. Very good. Splendid. That's excellent. Splendid. Slowly now. Crook your elbows. That's right. The tough training program lasts 8 to 12 years. Many throw in the towel before the time's up. Only the very best persevere. Another round now. Turn to the right. Left hand down. Hannah, not so fast. Not so fast. Our speciality is the seating position. We look very closely at how the riders sit. We work on that for years. Our pupils spend years riding on the lunge line, having their seat corrected. The rider needs to organize the horse as an equal partner. The idea is for the horse to participate voluntarily. The most difficult thing is that you work with the horse, and you do it very subtly. It's important that nobody can see what you're doing. You give the horse the help without others spotting it or knowing why you're doing it. It has to look better and better all the time. The federal stud in Piba in Styria. Will the breeders find a mare willing to mate today? The first attempt remains unsuccessful. OK, Bonacera next. The trial stallion has a strong reaction to Bonacera. Pheromones tell his sensitive nose that this mare's on heat. Horses are flight animals. When a stallion mounts a mare, he's rather defenseless, of course. 
so he has to be quick in order to defend himself again if other stallions are in the herd. Now one of the selected breeding stallions will get a go. It's a brief pleasure, taking just two short minutes. The likelihood of pregnancy is much higher from a live cover than from artificial insemination. We have the stallions here anyway, so we allow them this pleasure. Evening has come to the stud. The stallions, mares and foals are all driven back to their stables. Night falls and everything goes quiet at the farm. It's just Benvenuta, who's restless in her stall. Handler Hubert Stibola is working the night shift. He keeps checking on the mare. Benvenuta is pregnant and has been for 330 days. The foal could come any day now. This could go on for an hour or two. It's really hard to say. Dawn is on its way by the time Benvenuta's waters break and her contractions become stronger. The handler takes her to the birthing stall. Sometimes there are complications, particularly if it's a mare's first fall. And it is Benvenuta's first. That's why Hubert Stibola chooses not to let the mare out of his sight. Although the natural process doesn't require human intervention, the support of her handler makes the birth easier for Benvenuta. Success. The mare and her foal are fine. Just stay lying down. There are around 5,000 Lipitzan horses in the world. It took less than 20 minutes for another one to be born this night. Senior stud manager Leopold Weiss has a particularly close relationship with every animal. Even though it's night, he's come to welcome the latest arrival. Horses are independent from birth. But there's a risk that the mare may lie in such a way that the foal is by the wall. Or that the skin is still over the nose. We have to get rid of the afterbirth. We have to see that the foal stands up right away and that it doesn't wander off, but bonds with the mother. She'll clean it, and she's pinching it even. She wants it to stand up. Lipizzan horses are born with dark hides. Most tend to get their characteristic white color only between six and ten years of age. The date and time of birth are noted, 24th of May, 3.20 in the morning. Um 03.20. A birth is always exciting and nice to watch, of course. When Ben Venuta was young, I used to ride her, so I have a closer bond with her. Dadurch hat man auch immer ein bisschen näheren Kontakt zum Pferd. As soon as the foal is upright, it looks for its mother's milk. Benvenuta will suckle her young for half a year. On Saturdays and Sundays, the Spanish riding school performs traditional horsemanship in front of an audience. 32 Lipizzan stallions participate. Behind the scenes, 15 riders meticulously prepare for the show. The uniform, unchanged for 200 years, has to look perfect.
The performance consists of several parts. The young stallions will open the show. They're five years old and have already mastered the basic gates perfectly. All the other performances are delivered by fully trained stallions, who've been practicing their skills for at least six years at the highest level. Only the most talented and sensitive stallions master the particularly difficult jumps, such as the levade, courbette and capriole. Lipitzan horses excel at dressage. They're among the most intelligent, willing horses I know. And they've got a very lovable character. When the performance is over, there's a debrief. The discussion point today is stallion Neapolitano Allegra, who refused to perform a certain figure. There's a sense of disappointment. Neapolitano Allegra is particularly tricky to control during performances. The riders are all agreed, he's fine and everything is going well. And as soon as he's sent to stage, it's as if something flips and he turns difficult. After three frank words, everyone knows what they have to watch out for during the next training session. In Styria, the mares and their foals are let out to the pasture every morning. Before their move to the school in Vienna, the young animals experience the joy of unbridled exercise in the community of the herd. The mare Bonacera has other things to do. The stud has its own veterinary office, and that Max Dobretsberger has an important examination to perform. The stud manager wants to find out by ultrasound whether the mating was successful and if the mare is pregnant. Bonacera is accompanied by another mare. As a herd animal, she's more relaxed in company. Let's see what we can see. The black area is the amniotic fluid, and that's the new foal. I'd say she's 40 to 44 days pregnant. It's looking very good. The amniotic fluid looks good. This far along, we can say the mare's definitely pregnant. In just under 10 months, we'll have a lovely new foal. And the federal stud in Piba also has some pastures at higher elevations. The Stubalm pasture is around 20 kilometers away. The young stallion spent the summer at 1500 meters before some are taken to the riding school. But first around 50 stallions are sent to the summer pastures. Loading up 50 impetus young stallions is a challenge, even for the pros in Piba. Lipizzan horses cost between 3 and 5,000 euros at this age. To ensure none of the valuable animals get injured, the grooms have to use all their expertise. We're a good team. We've done this several times. We're all calm. There's no point making the situation hectic because the horses can sense that and then that causes problems trying to load them up. Everything goes well. And after a 45-minute drive, the valuable cargo reaches the Stubalm. Like every year, handler Peter Schützinger is already awaiting his charges. The stallions, who've still got dark hides, are taken to the stables. But they can sense that things will get lively in the herd in the next few days. 
They've been in the stables for so long, they're going to want to move. We'll see some playful battles and some battles for dominance. Every time the young stallions are taken to a new environment, they immediately start battles for dominance. The regular trials of strength confirm the lead animal in the herd. The stronger stallion will be in charge one day. These battles also illustrate why only stallions are taken by the Spanish riding school. The powerful movements and jumps performed by the male horses will later be refined and developed in the riding school. The young stallions will be looked after on the upland pastures by handler Peter Schützinger. He's going to spend the next three months here. Over the years, he's come to terms with the remote location of his workplace. If you're a horse person, then you can bear it. You have to be the right type for this, of course. You have your peace and quiet up here. You get used to it when you spend a hundred days up here in the summer, away from the world. The riding school is also after some peace and quiet at the start of the summer. The Lipitan horses have performed for ten and a half months non-stop, putting on 74 shows. Now they're allowed a well-deserved holiday after a tough year at work. It's really important that they're out in nature for six weeks. They need to be ridden outside and to eat grass. It needs to be a holiday. They come back refreshed and then they have the energy for when the next season starts in autumn. To recharge their batteries for the hustle and bustle of the city, the stallions need some time away. As young stallions, they left Piba for the higher pastures. Today, as celebrated riding school stars, they're chauffeured to their five-star holiday quarters in Heldenburg, Lower Austria. It's calming for the horses when they're taken to their summer domicile by their familiar riders. He's happy about his holiday. He knows he's got six weeks off now. That's fun. The stables of the Spanish riding school in the heart of Jena. Mid-August is the peak season for city tourists. The Lipizzan stallions have returned from their summer holiday in the country. They have to get back into their daily routine again. At the start of the new working year, the stallions face an important inspection of their shoes. The Lipizzan horses need to be shot properly so that they can cushion their jumps and go easy on their joints. Senior stable manager Johannes Hamminger and farrier Peter Gastner can tell from the horse's gait what their hooves are like. Only very experienced farriers are allowed to touch the hooves of these noble horses. They have to work on each hoof one at a time and choose the right shoe for the different figures. All the horses have their own particular pressure points. For the capriole jumpers, it's a huge impact for the horse when it lands, so the hooves need to be supported with a shoe. The horses don't feel any pain getting shod. The shoes are nailed into a thick, insensitive layer of horn. 
The shoe has to be made to fit the shape of the hoof exactly. It's just like our shoes, which also have to fit. These horses have to perform at the shows without sustaining any ill effect on their health. To make sure of that, the farrier has to shape every shoe to fit down to a fraction of a millimetre. Once all four shoes have been replaced, it gets exciting. Johannes Hamminger looks at the horse again. The strict senior stable master is only satisfied when the gait of the Lipitzan horse is absolutely regular. That looks splendid. When turning too, he leans over properly when turning. Yes, it looks better now when he comes over there. I think we can leave it like that. The home of the Lipitzan horses, the federal stud in Piba in Styria. The noble animals have been bred here for the Spanish riding school for almost a hundred years. They originally came from the Lipitsa stud, which was founded by Archduke Charles in 1580 near Trieste. That's how they got their name. But after the First World War, the stud fell to Slovenia and the Lipitsan horses found a new home in Styria in southeast Austria. Every year, around 40 foals are born on the stud. Blanketa is only five days old. Today, the foal is allowed out of the stable for the first time with its mother, but first without the other horses. During the first 10 days, the foal learns to stay with its mother. After 10 days, it can go into the free stall with the other mares so that it's still with its mother. It needs to know where it belongs. Not all the Lipitzan horses in Piba are suitable candidates for breeding or for the Spanish riding school. Around 40 horses are sold every year. That's a sizable income for the federal stud. Senior stud manager Leopold Weiss and stud manager Max Dobretsberger want to check personally whether Blanketa fulfills the high standards. Take the highest point, then over to the side. 99, navel, good, no rupture, nor in the groin, splendid, meconium already passed, that's good, heart sounds good, the foal looks very healthy, the eyes are fine and the teeth are good. The heart sounds clean. The navel is fine. It's nice and closed. An elegant foal, very noble. We're very pleased. Despite praise from so high up, as a mare, Blanketa is not a candidate for the riding school. It's exclusively stallions that start their working week at the Spanish Riding School every Tuesday morning. During the morning session, spectators are allowed to watch the riders at work. Senior rider Andreas Hausberger and his 15 riders are teaching the Lipitzan stallions the skills of classical horsemanship. It takes at least six years for the stallions to achieve the highest training level. In the first year, the stallions learn the basic gates, walking, trotting and cantering. Next, they are trained in certain walking lines and speed changes. Then, finally, they are taught the most difficult level, jumps and figures on just their hind legs. But how do you get a horse to do those things? The carrot works better than the stick, and so we've worked that way for centuries. That's the most important training tool at the Spanish Riding School. We train our horses with this, not with punishment. Trained riders also try to learn from each other. It's important that they look for mistakes in themselves, not in the horses. 
they've nurtured the art of working in partnership with the animals since the riding school was founded. It's in line with classical horsemanship. After the training session, the grooms and handlers take care of the Lipizzan stallions. Pupil Hanna Zeitelhofer has to help out. Two years ago, the young woman managed to get one of the few training places for riders. Even though she grew up with horses, the demands of this elite school are incredibly tough. The training program lasts up to 12 years and a considerable number drop out. But the first woman in the 450-year history of the school is determined to persevere. Even though the journey to becoming a perfect rider starts with mucking out after 72 horses. Everything's bigger. I wasn't used to looking after several horses and cleaning out several stalls. We don't have that much time either because we have to ride, we have to hurry, and then I'm tired and then I have to ride. That makes me even more tired. By the time I get home for lunch, I just want to sleep. To make sure the Lipizzan stallions of the Spanish riding school can perform their unique skills for 25 years, it's important that their tendons and joints become strong when they're young. The steep slopes of the Stubarn pasture are perfect for that. The young stallions spent the summer up here under the watchful eye of handler Peter Schützinger. In the evening, Peter Schützinger takes them back to the stable and makes sure they have enough food. I have to put up hay for the horses so that they can eat at night. In the wild, horses would do nothing but eat for 17 hours a day. Leaving the valuable animals outside at night would be far too dangerous. They could seriously injure themselves in the dark. Come, come. Handler Peter Schützinger also spends the summer nights on the mountain pastures. The comfort levels are basic. The electricity is just about enough for some lighting and the water is cold from a spring. But over the years, Peter Schützinger has got used to the remote location of his work accommodation. At least he takes it in turns with a colleague. This is my evening ritual after work. When the horses are in the stable, I get comfortable and warm and enjoy a good tea and a snack. I can have a good life too, not just the horses. It's quiet up here. I'm used to it. But you have to be the type. You're away from the world for a hundred days over the summer. We work three weeks on the trot and then get two days off. I head down and have to run errands, and after two days I come back, but I always look forward to it. To make sure the Lipizzan horses of the Spanish riding school can perform to the highest standards on a regular basis, they have to exercise between their performances. The horse experts in Vienna have developed a clever trick to exercise the stallions in the city without riders or bridle. For some years now, they've been exercising the horses on Europe's largest walking machine in a courtyard of the Hofburg Palace. They use the walking machine in the winter too. They're out in the open and get some natural light. That's important. They get a good workout. Here in the city centre, we haven't got any paddocks, so we do this instead. It helps their cardiovascular fitness and their mental alertness. 
A balanced diet is at least as important as regular exercise. That's true for any professional athlete. At half past one in the afternoon, after the morning training, the stallions are fed. It's a well-oiled ritual that pupil Hanna Zeitelhofer has to get involved in too. We've made a special feed for the stallions. They get muesli and linseed and sometimes some oats. All the stallions have a program we've set up in collaboration with the vet and the riders. We change it depending on what's needed. But the right food is important for top athletes to allow them to perform at this level. It's now mid-September. The young stallions will participate in a special event today, the traditional drive down from the mountain. The horses will be taken back to the federal stud today. At least for some of the stallions, this brings the time of unbridled freedom to an end forever. The floral decorations symbolize that none of the horses got sick or died on the mountain. It's a tradition when they come down from the mountain that they're decorated. The cattle get all kinds of things. Mirrors and heaven knows what. Halfway down is the pilgrimage church of Maria Lankovic. A good place to take a break in the firm belief that even the best work can only pay off with God's help. The priest's blessing is very welcome. Only then do they head on towards Piva, accompanied by the federal stud band. It was the last summer on the mountain pastures for 10 of these stallions. They're going to leave their carefree life at the stud behind to become skilled masters of dressage in the city. It was a lovely season in the mountain paddock. We were lucky with the weather. We had a lot of sunshine and few thunderstorms. Just a bit of fog sometimes, but it all went very well. The horses have also managed to come down from the mountain without injury. For the men from Piba, that's reason enough to celebrate. The indoor arena of the Spanish riding school in Vienna's Hofburg Palace is considered to be the most beautiful in the world. Built in the Baroque style in 1735, the arena had the largest self-supporting roof of its day. It's called the Winter Riding School because Charles VI had it built for the winter months. As a token of gratitude, there's still a picture of the emperor on the end wall of the arena. It too has lasted over the centuries, the uniform of the riders. It may only be worn after the students have passed their basic training. It has been tailored and altered in the Empire style for 200 years. The uniform we're currently wearing is also the one we wear during the week for our daily training sessions. That's one of our traditions. We don't ride the horses in normal riding clothes. As soon as we enter the winter riding school, we wear the traditional Empire uniform. We don't dress up especially for the performances. This is our work uniform. Even though Hanna Zeitlofer has already been in pupilage for two years, she's still not allowed to appear in front of an audience. Instead, she and the grooms get the stallions ready for the show. 
It's very important to me that I learn everything. I don't want to ride in a show before I've perfected it, because then I'd be insecure. I first have to learn to work with the horse, have a feeling for it, and the right posture, so I can show all that off. In line with the tradition of the establishment, every performance is to be as perfect as possible. But the riders are quite aware that their stars are made of flesh and blood. Horses are living creatures, and they can get distracted. We do everything we can to show perfect horsemanship, but horses aren't computers or machines. Things can happen. The Lipizzan horses at the riding school, which are among the best trained animals in the world, can still have their moods. The performances at the weekend are always very popular. The arena is completely full. There's always the same ritual in the beginning. The riders doff their characteristic bike horns. But not to greet the audience. It's an old tradition to thank the emperor for the construction of the arena. The program contains of all the figures of the highest level of dressage the haute école. Since they're very exhausting, none of the performances involve more than 30 Lipizzan horses. Only very few of them are suited to the difficult jumps, such as Levade, Caprio and Courbet. The absolute highlight is the school quadrille, a formation where eight stallions dance to a strict choreography. It's considered the most demanding in the world. We're back at the federal stud in Piba, Styria. The foal Blanchetta is four months now. Life is going to get serious for the young horse now. Senior stud manager Leopold Weiss wants to put a bridle on her for the first time today. It's an endeavor that Blanchetta isn't on board with. Good. It's all easier with a lump of sugar. This one's too big. After 43 years of working with young horses, the senior stud manager knows that all good training starts with patience and encouragement. Good. Und ich schon drinnen. Gut, sehr schön. Das passt jetzt wie angemessen. Mit vier, vier und halb Monaten. The training period starts at four, four and a half months. They get a bridle. They spend a few months just running around with the bridle. The foals play and pull each other a bit. Of course, we try to guide them a little by the bridle. They need the bridles so we can tie them up to clean them and feed them. This is another step they're gently prepared for. The food for the foals is placed near the chains. They eat here and start playing with the chain. That gets them used to the sound of the chain. Then, when we tie them up, it won't be so bad for them, because they already know the chain. Anna Zeitelhofer is about to get a special surprise. After two years of hard work, the senior stable manager 
hands her the sought-after uniform, and with it, the permission to work with horses in front of an audience. Right, Hannah. The boss has asked me to hand you the uniform. That's super, thanks. The boots, the bike horn and the coat. Thank you. And I wish you success on your first ride. Thank you. The tack room is right next door. Veritable treasures are stored here, around a hundred saddles, some of which have been in use for more than a hundred years. Hannah Zeitelhofer has a problem with her saddle. The center of gravity is wrong. That's a job for the saddler of the Spanish riding school, Ali Canucci. Ali, the saddle's sagging a bit at the back. Can you take a look? The saddles of the Spanish riding school are made from deerskin in Switzerland. Ali Canucci's job is to adapt the saddles to fit the riders and horses. That's necessary so that the riders can execute their exceptional figures to perfection. Anna Zeitelhofer is still in pupillage and she'll have to spend at least eight more years training. It's a massive sign of trust that she's allowed to wear the uniform. Soon she'll be allowed to perform in front of an audience in this arena. It's a big step for me. It means that what I've been doing can't have been that bad. They've seen what I can do and they want to show that off. That's special. Be it in Vienna's Hofburg or at the stud in Styria, the tradition and elegance of the empire live on. But it takes hard work to keep up this grand style for centuries. Stop,